Hey everyone, this is Paul, another one of our exclusive demo videos for all of our SQL Skills Insider friends. In this demo, what I'm going to do is investigate the concept of nested transactions. Now, I've just been talking about these in the class we're doing in Chicago right now, and I always like to say that nested transactions are really a joke perpetrated by the SQL team on all of you out there, because they don't exist. People get themselves into big problems using nested transactions, specifically around um, committing and rolling back what they think of as the inner transactions. And sometimes what you see is nasty code like this, where if you have stored procedures calling stored procedures calling stored procedures, and each one of those stored procedures has a uh, begin tran or even multiple uh, nested transactions inside it. Every so often you might see a developer putting this kind of code in because they really don't know what's going on in terms of the trend count. And having this kind of thing in there is just showing that the developers don't know what's going on and so there's some kind of nasty stuff going on. And the problem you have with nested transactions with this kind of level of not understanding what's going on is you have the potential for um, lots of log growth, you have the potential for unintended activity in terms of rollbacks occurring when uh, somebody does a rollback trend thinking that it's going to roll back a nested transaction when it doesn't actually. So I want to show all this stuff to you and prove it to you. So what I'm going to do is um, create a little database to play around with and I've made it in the simple recovery model so that whenever I do a checkpoint I can clear out the log and show you guys what's going on. So go ahead and do that. Create a very simple little table to play with and then do a checkpoint to clear out the log. So first thing I'm going to do is um, show you what's going on in terms of the log records that happen when you do a nested transaction. So here's my outer transaction that I'm creating and then I'm going to go and insert five values into my table. Now I create a nested transaction. So I do my begin tran of my inner transaction insert another five rows. So we have our 10 rows sitting inside here. Okay. Now let's see what was put into the transaction log. So we have a whole bunch of stuff going on in terms of creating the table, allocating pages and so on. But if we go across and look at the transaction names, we'll see our outer transaction. This is us starting our outer transaction. Okay. Now let's scroll down and see if we can see the one for the inner transaction. No, there's nothing there for the inner transaction. Interesting. Okay. So scrolling back across, keeping that outer tran highlighted. So here's the begin tran for our outer transaction. And the transaction ID is 1E3. So let's scroll down and see our inserts happening. So here's our inserts happening. So we have grabbing a new identity value, doing an insert, identity value insert. So one, two, three, four, five. That was the five that we did after starting our outer transaction. So then we did our inner transaction and inserted five more rows. So here's the one, two, three, four, five for the new inserts that we did, but for the, for the inner transaction that we did. However, the transaction ID for the inner transaction inserts is exactly the same as the transaction ID for the outer transaction inserts. And as we saw, we didn't see, there's no extra begin tran log record in here saying that we've started our inner transaction because there's no such thing as nested transactions. So if I then do a commit tran of my inner transaction, it works. However, what happened in the log? Nothing, absolutely nothing. The last log record was the same insert log record that we saw previously. No commit actually occurred. If we roll back the outer transaction, thinking that we've committed our inner transaction, this is what developers are thinking, right. it actually rolls back everything, absolutely everything, because there was no inner transaction. The fact that SQL Server allows you to do this is horrible because it gives you the impression that it actually has done a separate piece of committed, durable work. But as we've just seen, our rollback dropped our uh, count of records back down to zero. If we look in the transaction log, oops, 
inserts. There's our inserts, all right? And then we see a whole bunch of deletes. So we see the deletes occurring. Every single one of the records we inserted, including the ones that SQL Server said, yes, we committed the inner transaction, got rolled back. If we scroll across here, we'll see that all of these are, where are we? They're all compensation log records, every single one of them. So the commit to the inner transaction did nothing. So let's look again. Let's look at Trancan this time. So begin my outer transaction, insert five rows. Begin my inner transaction, insert five rows. Looking at tran count. Our tran counts two. Again, SQL Server is perpetuating this myth that nested transactions actually exist. Let's try rolling back to our inner transaction. You can't. Okay. There is no inner transaction, so it will not allow you to roll back to the inner transaction, even though we did a begin tran and called it inner transaction. That begin tran, as we saw previously, didn't write anything in the log, so there's no way to roll back. We don't have a different transaction. Right? We would have to roll back everything, which drops our tran count down to zero, but rolls back absolutely everything that we did. And just to show, same thing. All the inserts we did on the forward way, all the deletes that we did on the rollback. All part of the same transaction, 1E6 there. Now what I'm going to do is show you one of the things that you can do if you do want to be able to basically save your state in a transaction as something that you can roll back to, and it's called a save point. So clearing out the log again. Do a begin tran, this is our outer transaction, and insert five rows. So now I do a save point. Okay, so I do save transaction and give it a, a name. Now let's have a look and see what's in the log. So there's our transaction. This is our, sorry, there's our transaction starting. This is us doing our inserts. And then we did a save point. Okay. So this is our save point name that we did. Now you can see it didn't start a different transaction. Right? It's the same transaction um, ID. And it also didn't cause a log flush. So all the stuff that we did previously isn't yet durable in the transaction log on disk because the save point didn't create a new log block. We can see from the LSNs here, log sequence number, sorry, VLF sequence number, log block within that VLF, log record within the log block. It's the same log block that we saw previously. So now I can go ahead and insert another five rows. So I go ahead and insert another five rows. Now we have 10. Our tran count's still one. The save point didn't touch the tran count at all. We have our five new rows. And we can see that still we are inside the same log block. The save point didn't, didn't do anything special to our transaction log, didn't flush anything out. Now I can do rollback to my save point. It doesn't touch my tran count, but it did roll back the five records that I inserted. I haven't rolled back my entire transaction yet, but I was able to roll back some of the work that I did inside my transaction, okay, even though it had been done as a separate batch, Okay, by using the save point. Now having a look in the transaction log, what we see is our five deletes, and we see this funny thing. So let's scroll across and see what that's doing. So that is part of the rollback for the transaction. So we have our compensation log records, and then we have this. And if we go across and we look at the locks. So SQL Server uh, from 2005 onwards, whenever it's a, doing an operation, making a change, it, acquire, it makes a note in the transaction log of the locks that were held at the time the operation occurred to allow the fast recovery feature to happen. And what that does is when crash recovery is happening, as part of the redo part of recovery, it's looking at all the log records it knows it's going to have to undo. It's acquiring all the locks 
that are stored in a bitmap in the log record. It doesn't actually log all of this text. And when, it ha when it's finished redo, it has all the locks. And so it's able to allow you into the database in Enterprise Edition before the undo has occurred because it knows it has all the locks necessary to do the undo. Anyway, I digress. Our, the end of our rollback to the save point has this guy in it saying release lock to this and this is the log sequence number 1488D. If we go all the way back over here to our sequence numbers 14880D is the LSN that we did our save point. So what this log record is doing is essentially saying okay I have now cancelled out everything back to that save point. So in a way we didn't do nested transactions there but what we did allow to happen was rollback of part of a transaction. So that's just a quick video showing you and proving to you in, in two ways that nested transactions don't actually exist and they are a bad thing to use because you can get into problems using them. As we saw when we tried to commit the nested transaction in the first part of the demo, nothing actually got committed and so a developer using that construct would think that the, the log was committed and could potentially be cleared but of course it doesn't so you have the potential for a lot of transactional log growth. So by all means show this demo video to anybody that you think is using nested transactions and needs to be shown that nested transactions don't actually do what SQL Server gives you the impression it's doing. Hope you've enjoyed the video and tune in in a couple of weeks where I'll send another one out. Thanks for listening.